Hi, this is Edward Kench. Let's take a few minutes to break the design bonds of the classic corporate data paradigm, meaning relational database systems like Oracle, SQL Server, and DB2. These systems manipulate maybe tens of thousands of records per day. Instead, we'll jump straight into developing the building blocks of a big data platform, which is designed to manipulate, ingest, and analyze thousands of records per minute, or even per second. First, we'll set up an Azure Data Lake Gen 2, load some data into it, and then use Databricks, an enterprise version of Apache Spark, to read and write to the data lake. We're going to build a big data platform with NoSQL using Azure and Databricks. You're going to need a free or paid Azure subscription to create Azure Data Lake Gen 2. We'll only be working with a few megs of data in this demo, so right now I'm showing you the ADLS2 Gen 2 price calculator so you can see how low the cost is for storage and access. Less than a couple cents a gigabyte for storage, about six cents for 10,000 writes, a half cent for 10,000 reads. If you're using the new Azure subscription, this demo will only consume pennies out of your free $200. So first go to azure.microsoft.com, get an Azure account if you don't have one. You'll need to have a Microsoft account to sign up for Azure, and once you have your account, I'll meet you at portal.azure.com. Once you're logged into the Azure portal, click on Create a Resource and search for Storage Account. Creating a new storage account is how you get to Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Click Create. I'm going to create a new resource group to logically group my new objects and give my storage account an appropriate name. This name is important because it represents the top level of your data lake, and later we will use it to connect from Databricks, so remember the name you use here. Click Next, and this is where you enable Data Lake Storage Gen 2. By checking the box for a hierarchical namespace, it adds many features that provide for high speed analytics across lakes and oceans of data. So check that, and let's click Next. Click Next on Networking. For data protection, leave the defaults and click Next. On the tags, I'm going to add a description, and then click Next. Then click Create, and let's wait while that resource gets allocated. Click Go to Resource. Once you're in your storage account, scroll down to Storage Explorer Preview. I'm just going to minimize these blades to get more screen space. So now let's set up the data lake. Right click on Containers and Create File System. In this demonstration, we'll be working with state and county demographic data from the U.S. Census, so I'll call it County Demographics. Once you create the file system, navigate to it underneath Containers. I'm going to add two folders, one for staging raw data and another to place data after it's been transformed. I'll call them Stage and Transform. We will be accessing the storage account and these folders from Databricks, so remember the names. Click Upload and let's get the Azure Storage Explorer. Click Download Now and then run the downloaded file. I'm going to skip to the end of the install. Leave the box checked and click Finish. Connect to your Azure Storage account by adding your Azure account and then use your Azure credentials. Make sure the right subscription is selected if you have multiple.
Go to the storage account we just created in the Azure portal. I called mine CP Data. There is the file system I created called County Demographics, and the two folders I created are inside of it. Using this tool, I can upload my file. So I grab my County Demographic Data file and upload it into the Stage folder. To follow me on this exercise, you can download a copy of County CSV following the link below the video or go to cloudphilosopher.com slash free data and download counties.csv. Or you can use your own CSV file if you have a good sample file. So I'm going to upload my copy of counties.csv. And once the file is uploaded, we have our first data in the staging area of our data lake. Let's go back to the Azure portal, because in order to connect to your data lake, you need the keys. Open up the blade and click on Access Keys. Then click on Show Keys. Click the Copy button to save the first key, and we are ready to move into Databricks. Using Databricks on Azure can be expensive, so we will just use the free Community Edition, which provides free Databricks clusters for you to test and develop on. If you're a new user, click Sign Up and fill out the form. Click Get Started for free, and then click Get Started. Open the email that you should have just received. And from there, click on the link. Reset your password to something we can't guess, and don't forget what it is. Welcome to Databricks. First, let's spin up your free cluster by clicking Clusters, and then Create Cluster, name it, and notice you get for free 15 GB of memory to use for your data frames and queries. Click Create Cluster. Wait for the circle to stop spinning and turn green, and your cluster is running. Click the Databricks icon at the top, and then create a blank notebook. Notebooks are the coding and development environment. Stick with Python for this demo. The first thing we have to do is configure the session using the Spark object, and set the key for our storage account. Remember when I told you to remember things? Here is where you will put those to use. Run the cell. Add another cell. Here I'll access the storage account file system and list the contents of the stage directory in my data lake. Note the structure of the resource address. I'm accessing the directory called Stage. So we run this cell and see that it lists the contents, showing the path to the file I uploaded a few minutes ago in my lake, counties.csv. Remember the path. We are about to use it. Add a new cell and initialize a new variable called counties CSV that points to the path of the CSV listed above. And then run the cell. Add a new cell to create the Spark data frame in the cluster's memory from the CSV that is in the data lake. The data frame is called DF, and since the first row of the CSV file is column names, we can use header equals true in the parameters. After it completes, notice that you can peek at some of the schema. Add another cell. Pass the data frame to the display function and execute the cell you will see a subset of the data returned. You just pulled data from the lake. 
Add another cell and test out the print schema function of the data frame. Add another cell and try out the select function of the data frame to select specific columns. Don't forget to call the show function at the end. Run the cell. I'll adjust the screen magnification to easily see the result set. Add another cell and start this code segment with the percent SQL magic command, which allows us to then use SQL syntax inside our Python code. First, we will create a database to connect to our data lake file system. Run the cell. Add another cell and then let's create a table from our CSV and query it using standard SQL syntax. So this new table will point to the CSV inside the Azure data lake. Follow the syntax on the screen. Add another cell and just use a regular old SQL select statement to query the CSV file like it were a table. Add another cell. In this one, we are going to use the functions of the data frame to write the data frame out in parquet file format. This format saves space, decreases cost, and improves performance using columnar indexes, so it is preferred over CSV for bigger jobs. Notice the path that I'm using. I'm writing the Parquet file to my transform folder, since I will transform the CSV now to a much better format. Also notice the file I create has the .parquet extension. Run the cell. Create a new cell and let's make a new data frame variable called df2 and read the data in parquet format from the lake. We'll be reading from the file we just created. Add another cell and let's read the transformed Parquet file from the data lake. We will use the pandas library to produce a friendly looking, well formatted output of the top five rows and all the columns in the file. So on the new data frame, call to pandas and then call the head function. Back in Storage Explorer, we can go into the transform folder and see that the counties.parquet file was indeed written in a columnar compressed format, which is more efficient for queries and cost. Why did we do this? To show NoSQL and how it works and explain its advantages over other database query paradigms. Thanks. If this was helpful, please like, subscribe, and add comments.